Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Brian O'Neill. And glad to have on with us this morning a Stephen County Republican Chairman Joe Sempolinski. Joe, thanks for uh, calling in. It's always a pleasure, Brian. Thanks for having me. Well, let's start out with uh, President Donald Trump's uh, visit to England. Just as there's uh, uh, potential changes in uh, who sits in the prime minister's seat over in England. Any thoughts there, Joe Sempolinski? Well, I'm glad that the president's going over there. Uh, This is uh, a very crucial time for the United Kingdom. They're obviously a longtime ally. We have a very successful uh, relationship uh, with them. And they're going to need a change. Uh, Theresa May is, is stepping down. She hasn't been able to deliver uh, the Brexit that the people voted for. I think you're going to end up with a stronger Brexit prime minister like a Boris Johnson. And having the president there um, is, is somebody that uh, it's important to build that relationship. We have the president gets a lot of flack for somehow he's not building relations with our allies. I think he thought he was. A meeting with the Prime Minister of Japan very recently. He is over in uh, the United Kingdom, uh, making sure that that relationship is sustained through the transition in the Prime Minister's office. Uh, so good for the President being there. there. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this develops. Uh, the Brexit vote was a surprise uh, in the United Kingdom, but I think it shows that there is this sort of underlying um, uh, sort of populist feeling within the United Kingdom that the same as there was in the United States when Trump was elected, where uh, people have sort of had enough of elites uh, telling them how to live their life, what to do, what's right, what's wrong, and uh, want to have a little bit of autonomy. And certainly Brexit will provide that for the United Kingdom. Um, and you've kind of had quite a bit of time with the Prime Minister that couldn't deliver it. So it, it's going to be a very interesting uh, development. Uh, that's going to happen, uh, how that goes down in the United Kingdom, and have the president there on the ground is a good thing. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing to watch over there, because with the whole Brexit situation with uh, Prime Minister Theresa May, is it that she could not deliver or the Brexit, or that she would not deliver the Brexit? Well, you know, uh, the good book says you were neither hot nor cold, and I spit you out. And I think that's sort of what happened. That's a good rule for politics, too. Where she didn't want to be one of the hard edge, let's just break away without a deal, uh, preserving some of the um, trade um, protections. And also, there was also a very controversial matter regarding what happens with the border between Northern Ireland and Ireland, because Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, will still be in the United Kingdom. You put up a, you know, checkpoints at the border and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but on the same side, she wasn't one saying, no, 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 we're not going to do this. And she was in this sort of funny middle. So the people that were for a very much in favor of the Brexit were mad with her for not, you know, doing that and just go breaking away. And the people that were much more skeptical on Brexit were mad at her for doing any sort of Brexit. So she was stuck in the middle. Uh, didn't have a national coalition. The the politics in the United Kingdom has become very polarized on this issue. And either people are for ripping off the Band-Aid and getting out or therefore staying, and this sort of middle, let's do a deal, uh, didn't have a huge constituency, and the Prime Minister found that out when she brought it to a vote repeatedly in the House of Commons. Talking to uh, Stu Ben County Republican Chairman Joe Sempolinski, live on the uh, Newsmaker Show this morning, while the Mueller Report and the aftermath of the Mueller Report. Your thoughts, Joe Sempolinski? Here's what I don't get, where the Democrats are freaking out over the Attorney General and, oh, did he mischaracterize a summary of a report? Okay, okay, maybe he said things in a way that they wouldn't have summarized it. But you can read the report. You know, I pulled it up. You can, other than a very small portion that's redacted, you can just read it yourself and draw your own conclusion. That's the beauty of a democracy. And uh, to be able to, you know, look at it, write your own conclusions on, uh, you know, it's pretty clear in that report from what I read that there wasn't collusion. Now they're more, you know, the Democrats have moved the goalposts from collusion to obstruction. Uh, I think a lot of this, Brian, is that the Democrats still have not come to terms with the fact that Donald Trump won the presidential election, and they will keep moving the goalposts until they find something they can. Uh, try and undo that election with. And uh, that's very sad for our democratic process. We're going to have a presidential election next year. 
if somebody does want to like Donald Trump, they can vote for a different candidate. Uh, but Donald Trump is a president. Donald Trump wants fair and square, and we should all be focusing on uh, the issues that face our country as opposed to trying to undo that election. Joseph Polinsky, your, um, your former boss there, uh, former Congressman uh, Tom Reed, and Joseph Polinsky was a uh, long time a part of the uh, the uh, Congressman Tom Reed staff. I, am I understanding that right, that you're no longer a part of uh, Congressman Tom Reed's staff there, Joe? I, I still do some part-time consulting for him. In okay. Full disclosure. So there is still a relationship there, but I am not a full-time employee anymore. I was on the official staff for uh, many years, and then I was his campaign manager uh, three times. But I have, we, have, uh, we still have a relationship so as far as, you know, I've, you know, I'm a consultant on his campaign, uh, but we, you know, I'm not a full-time staffer anymore. Well, Reed's feeling is, uh, and and he said this publicly. You know, enough is enough. Let's move on. The investigation's over. Let's let's get going. Let's get some work done for the American people. But uh, it, it sounds like um, Nancy Pelosi is in a bit of a situation because I think she'd kind of like to do the same thing. That Reed says, but at the same time, uh, she's getting pressure from the AOC wing of the Democratic Party, and they want impeachment. Well, I couldn't agree with the Congressman more that you, this time to move on. We had an investigation. We spent millions and millions of dollars, taxpayer money. We found out as much as we could about the collusion. That should be the focus: is uh, 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 the, uh, the interference that there wasn't collusion. That we should. Uh, focus on, well, all right, how do we keep foreign entities or domestic entities from interfering in the election process? But that's what the Democrats want to talk about. They want to get rid of the president. And Nancy Pelosi knows if they impeach, only two things can happen. Either the impeachment vote fails, and she shows that the Democrats are divided and can't govern, or the impeachment vote passes, and then we're going to have a trial in the Senate where the Senate's run by Republicans, and there's not going to be a conviction. And then the president through his entire re-election campaign, can say, see, the Democrats just want to get rid of me because I want to grow the swamp. And you're going to hand this massive election issue to the president and probably get him re-elected. Um, so the speaker's got a real problem because he's got some real, uh, real uh, I don't know if calling him wackos is, a, is an appropriate thing to say, but they got some real staunch uh, extremists in her caucus, like Alexander Acosta, of course, was, who... I think uh, don't see the big political picture. Nancy Pelosi, I don't agree with Nancy Pelosi on about 90% of things, but she's a very smart politician. I think she's saying the writing on the wall that this doesn't end well no matter how it goes for the Democrats with the Republicans controlling the Senate and a year out from the presidential election uh, to try and impeach the president for, uh, you know, for sort of some of the silly stuff. Now, with President Donald Trump talking tariffs in Mexico, that certainly has gotten uh, Mexico's attention. They got somebody uh, right up uh, to Washington all ready to uh, speak on this topic. In fact, he already has. Uh, what do you think uh, of the uh, the threat of the tariffs in Mexico? Against Mexico from the U.S.? Yeah, the tariffs is where from the home country. I have a couple of different things on some of the different countries. With Mexico... I would hope we can find some sort of uh, accommodation because we did just sign that new uh, trade deal with them. They're a major trade partner. They're our neighbor. And I hope we can figure out some way, uh, you know, this is some sort of negotiating tactic to bring them to the table on handling uh, some of their issues. Um, I am. There's also the China issue, which uh, I do like the fact that, you know, the president is taking a much firmer line with them. You know, they have a history of uh, theft of intellectual property. They have a history of currency manipulation, and uh, doing some things on an economic standpoint that really do negatively impact the United States. So the president taking a real firm line uh, with the Chinese, I think, is important not just for the economy, but also for geopolitics. They are the you know, biggest rival to the United States as far as who is the dominant uh, political power on this planet, really. You know, they have the second largest economy, they have a very large army, uh, they have a very different economic system than what we do. Obviously, they're a communist system. And which way the world goes over the next 50 to 100 years, it's either going to go more toward democracy, capitalism, openness, transparency in the American way, or they're going to go the Chinese way. 
So taking a firm line with them and saying, hey, listen, we're not going to let you do something for doing is, uh, is important. With Mexico, obviously Mexico is not the second largest economy in the world. I would hope uh, we can find some sort of accommodation with them because it's in everyone's interest uh, on the North American continent to have fair uh, trading relations where all parties are not getting ripped off. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We're talking with Joe Sempolinski, the Stuben County Republican Chairman. We're going to talk state and local when we get back. Stay with us. If you're like me, you take walking seriously. So you wear Go Walks from Skechers. They're the only walking shoes I know that have the five ables. What does that mean? You want walking shoes that are comfortable, breathable, washable, adorable, and affordable. That's the five Ables and Skechers Go Walks have it all. They've got air-cooled Goga Mat insoles for lasting comfort. They're made with washable, breathable materials. They're adorable and they're wonderfully affordable. They're very able shoes. Get Skechers Go Walks at a Skechers store near you or wherever stylish shoes are sold. There's nothing like meeting face-to-face, and there's nothing like Zoom to make that happen. Zoom lets you connect and do business across town or around the world. Zoom ties together all of your communication needs into one easy platform for video conferencing, phone calls, group chat, webinars, and your conference rooms. Connect easily from anywhere, your mobile phone, your laptop, or conference room. Zoom is how business gets done. Get your free account at Zoom.com today. Meet happy with Zoom. Time to check in with meteorologist Rob Carolyn, who describes it like this. Beautiful fall day for early June. Unfortunately, that's the case, Brian. Uh, We're going to get a fair amount of sunshine today, but not a whole lot of warming taking place. Storm system in Quebec helping to pull cool air down from central Canada. That air is going to move across us and uh, keep our temperatures well below normal today and into tomorrow. Looks like we're going to end up with a partly to mostly sunny day. There'll be some fair weather cloudiness around this afternoon. It'll be breezy, cool temperatures today only reaching 55 to 60, which is way below normal. It looks like we're clear, cool tonight. The winds will diminish. We'll drop down to 40. Brian, there could be a few spots in the southern tier that get into the 30s tonight. Tomorrow, sunshine to start, but then we'll cloud up as warmer air heads our way. A few showers may pop up tomorrow afternoon. Highs will be near 65. Tomorrow night, clouds. Chance of showers, 50 to 55. Showers Wednesday, chance of a thunderstorm, 70 to 75. Brian, the sun came up this morning at 535. It'll set tonight at 842. And we're talking with Stuben County Republican Chairman Joe Sempolinski this morning. Uh, let's move on to state issues. Uh, potential opponents for Governor Andrew Cuomo on the Republican side. Are there any yet? Yeah, we're starting to kick that around. And now that uh, we've come to our determination on who the new state Republican chairman is going to be, which will be uh, current Erie County Chairman Nick Langworthy, the big project for Nick and the rest of us is going to be putting up a candidate that can defeat Andrew Cuomo uh, in 2022. I know that uh, County Executive Molinaro is still thinking about it, whether he wants to go again. Uh, he was a he was a great retail politician. I think with more lead time, he maybe have a chance to be more competitive uh, in an election. He, he sort of got into the race a little late uh, last time. I'm also hearing about uh, Harry Wilson, who ran for controller uh, in 2010 and thought about running for governor this last time, that he is kicking around. Uh, I've heard rumors, uh, but these are more sort of rumors, less substantial than the other two, about former Congressman uh, Gibson, uh, who uh, is from the Hudson Valley and had run. That one, I haven't heard anything as recently as I have about the other two. Uh, but those would be three names uh, that would be, you know, obviously any one of them would be an improvement over the governor. And uh, each of them brings their own strengths and weaknesses uh, to the table. Obviously, Molinaro now has the highest name recognition, most experience running statewide. Uh, Wilson has a lot of money. Gibson is uh, sort of a tenacious campaigner, has federal experience that the other ones don't have. Um, but I know that right now, you know, some of these guys are sort of weighing their options on whether they get in. I, my, me personally, what I hope we do, no matter who it is, is we come to a consensus fairly early in this process, so we're not in a situation like we were last time, which is figuring out who the candidate is in the spring of the election year. I'd love to be in a situation where the Republican Party has a consensus, uh, you know, maybe hopefully more than two years out, I mean, unless it's sometime next year maybe even, having a consensus of who the candidate is, gives them time to fundraise, gives them time to get their name out and present a real contrast uh, with Governor Cuomo. That would be an ideal situation. I want it early, whoever it is, 
Uh, but we have some names, and now we have a chairman in place. He's going to be officially elected the 1st of June. It's going to be Nick Langworthy who can lead that process uh, for us as a party to put up a strong governor, candidate, and statewide ticket uh, in 2022. Uh, just reading from the New York Daily News' website, uh, talking about Governor Andrew Cuomo's roller coaster relationship with unions and organized labor has hit a few rough patches early in his third term following the breakdown of the Amazon deal, a bitter fight over campaign finance reform, and overtime issues uh, with the MTA in New York City. Question for you, Joe Sempolinski, your Steuben County GOP chair. Are the uh, Republicans statewide uh, looking at possibly courting a maybe a pro-union candidate who could move in and capitalize on that weakness from the governor? I, can, I think that'd be smart, because I can tell you, for years now, I have talked with union people, especially trade union people, who are very frustrated with the governor. Uh, if you were somebody that's in a, a trade union, uh, and a lot of these other unions, you just want business to take place. Business to take place normally, so your membership has jobs, that there needs to be economic activity, there needs to be projects, there needs to be construction, development. That's all you want. So you can do a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. And when you have a governor that has tied up the state with regulations and laws and red tape and, you know, backroom deals and sweetheart deals and corruption, that doesn't help your average union member get to work. And that's what they want. They want to work. And so I think there's a real opportunity to separate, especially the private sector unions, away from the Democratic Party and say, hey, listen, let's get, let's get New York State back to work. Let's get your membership working because that's what they want. That's what everybody wants. And uh, I have seen that develop over the entire course of the governor's term, and I think it's only going to accelerate into a real opportunity uh, for the Republican Party in this state because uh, we're pro-business, we're pro-work, we're for get people uh, uh, a wage, and that's what the union wants. Now, we see Governor Andrew Cuomo since the last election has taken a lot of the uh, policies from the Cynthia Nixon campaign and uh, adopted them. And uh, pretty much the same for AOC there, Alexandria Sasio cortez the downstate uh, congresswoman. Do you think the Republican Party statewide would be smart to adopt, in, in a similar way, the ideas of Libertarian Larry Sharp, pick up some of those ideas uh, to, uh, to you know, push for some Libertarian ideas so that maybe Larry Sharp would not run again? Well, you know, Larry Sharp didn't cost Mark Monaro the election. I mean, the, the, the race wasn't close enough that that matters. But I think it's, it's always better to be a big tent when you can. And I know that a lot of the concerns uh, that Larry Sharp articulated were concerns with the governor that were shared by people who are Republican as well. So if we can work together across the sort of center-right, even moderate Democrats, libertarian spectrum, that's what we need to do in this state to win. We're going to need Republicans, like-minded Democrats, libertarians, independents, conservatives, all rallying around the same candidate. And that's what I was going to say to people during, as I did say to people during the election uh, last year, was you may like Larry Sharp. I met Larry Sharp. He seemed like a really nice fella. But either Andrew Cuomo or Mark Molinaro is going to be the next governor. So if you vote for Larry Sharp, that's really a vote that could have gone to Mark. Yeah, and I, I meant to ask you this earlier here in your answer. I couldn't make out what you said. Did you say that Larry Sharp did or did not cost uh, Molinaro the election? He did not. He did not cost Mark, Mark the election. The election wasn't close enough that, that Larry cost him the election. Um, but I think we need to be unified. And if we can find a candidate that unifies the center, the right, libertarian, and peels off moderate Democrats like the Union Democrats, then we have a real chance of winning. And um, final question for you, uh, Steuben County GOP Chair Joe Sempolinski, that three-way race for the Kathy Young seat in the uh, New York State Senate, and she covers uh, Allegheny County, Livingston, Chautauqua, and uh, what's the other, Cataraugus. Uh The three-way race, Democrat Austin Morgan, who is a college student at uh, Cornell University, 
Republican George Borello, who's a Chautauqua County executive over in the Jamestown area, and Allegheny County legislator Republican Kurt Crandall. And there's going to be a, a primary between Borello and Kurt Crandall on uh, the 25th coming up this month. Did you have any thoughts on that uh, race for the Kathy Young seat? I think uh, pretty clearly the two Republican candidates are uh, head and shoulders more qualified uh, than the Democrat candidate. Uh, this almost seems, I've looked at some of his campaign material. It almost seems like a um, sort of a college project uh, for him as opposed to a run for the New York, New York State Senate. Um, Kurt and George are friends of mine, both of them. I've known them both for years. Uh, and frankly, either one of them would be an excellent senator. So whoever wins that primary on the 25th of June, uh, I'm going to be backing wholeheartedly, and I'll do whatever they want me to do uh, to help. Uh, Sioux County, we don't have any of that Senate district. We're all in Senator Romero's district. But I'm happy to help any way that I can and let any expertise or, or uh, uh, help that I can. Either one of them would do a great job. George, is, uh, they're both small businessmen. George uh, has a uh, promotional company, uh, and Kirk has a, uh, a memorial uh, company. Uh, small business people. A lot of government experience at the county uh, level for both of them. Uh, they both serve in the county legislature. They've both been the highest elected official in that county, uh, legislative chairman in Allegheny County and the executive in Chautauqua County. So either one of them is going to do a great job, and they have the right sort of perspective, the local government perspective that we need to have uh, in, in Albany. This is a very Republican seat. Uh, there's not a lot of Democrat territory in it. And there's some really Republican territory, like in Allegheny County. So I think whichever one of them wins the primary is going to do very well in the general election, and I'll do whatever I can to make sure that uh, that they get to the Senate. With that, we have to leave it. Joe Sempolinski, Stubman County Republican Chair, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.